The fake designer handbag business is nothing new. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> the quality of knockoffs today is at a whole new level, and that is causing tremendous problems for brands selling the real deal. Fake bags have been developed so well, they can trick nearly everyone. And the market right now is booming, fueled by social media users and influencers showing off their hyper-realistic replicas. Amy Wang is here with us now. She is an assistant managing editor for the New York Times Magazine. And you wrote about this. Amy, welcome. So welcome. Thank we're you for having me. going to dive right into this because you brought along two... Uh, samples for us to basically <laughs> examine. Okay, let's okay. see. We don't know. Uh, so is one of these fake and one of these is real? That's the thinking, unless you guys okay. disagree. In other okay. words, no He told me not to no tell hints. you. You're supposed to okay. smell it. Okay. You can smell oh. it. You can, you can fondle the bag. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> do whatever you need to do to. So okay. I have to tell you, I cannot tell. I mean, the stitching looks good on this. It mm. smells like real leather. I, I, don't, I cannot tell. It seems real. Um, same as this. I look at the stitching and oh, that man, seems to be... Good quality. Any, mm, yeah, any guesses? It doesn't quite I'm smell guess, like leather to me, this see, one. This see, is now you're doubting yourself. Yeah. I'm going to say the um, smaller one is real, the larger one is fake. Oh, interesting. Would you, would you agree? I No, I actually would have said the opposite, that this is Ooh. fake and this is real. Well, I guess this is a good moment to reveal that both of these are fake. <gasps> the two bags are both <laughs> counterfeit <laughs> bags purchased from China um, oh, in, wow. this, in this categorization known as super fakes, which are bags that are now so realistic that... Uh, the average person, or even an expert, or even often an authenticator, or a person at the actual boutique can't tell. So yeah. what are you discovering about how bags are becoming super fakes now? Because mm -hmm. I thought there used to be a smell test, there's a quality test. Mm. Well, I've exhausted everything that I know how to cut, try and look at, which is very minimal. Mm -hmm. So what's happening? I know a lot of these bags are being manufactured in China. Right. So we used to be familiar with this sort of Canal Street breed of bag, where you're like, oh, that's so clearly a fake okay. bag. You know, the, the, the stitching's all off, the color's all wrong. But there are a couple of factors that have contributed to the rise of super fakes. Two on the demand side of things. One is that consumers are being asked to pay higher and higher prices, right? Like a Chanel handbag actually costs $10,000 or more now. Oh, wow. And that's Incredible. an extraordinary price to ask out of people who are feeling squeezed, who are feeling impacts of a recession and might not have um, high enough salaries to even like afford their, their average daily life, but would like a luxury. And then secondly, right, they want to shop in a convenient way People are used to buying on Instagram, on AliExpress, on DHgate, ah. on Amazon. Um, so there's no real like uh, sort of fear of buying a good online now. And if you're being advertised an ad on Instagram for a fake bag, you might as well take that up, right? You're like, well, it's $100. You know, if I pay 100 there for that, and I pay $100 for like a meal at a restaurant. What's there to lose? So these sellers in China are also getting very savvy at the same time and, and realizing they can advertise over these new sales channels. Um, and they're also getting better organized within themselves. The labor chains are better organized. The technology is better organized. Mm. And then, of course, most importantly, the selling of it is just so easy when you can just create an ad on Instagram, put it out to a bunch of American women and across the globe seamlessly conduct the sort of sale that would not be possible before yeah, so Amy, what does all this mean for designer brands themselves? How are they responding to this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so naturally designer brands are pretty worried about um, how to address the problem. And they're spending billions of dollars um, in these sort of like trade organizations trying to, to counter and tackle counterfeits. But U.S. Customs, for example, to use one example of a, of a border patrol group, only has so many people, and they can only inspect about 5%. That's It's estimated about 5% um, of what comes in into the border. So it seems like a really great uh, odd or a great... Yeah. Right, like great stakes for people who um, are interested in buying bags. Like you only have a five percent risk of getting something mm -hmm. really and seized. And I wonder if the perception of customers has also changed because mm -hmm. there is a considerable markup for actual designer handbags. Right, mm -hmm. it did not cost the company. $10,000 to make the handbag. So I'm wondering if consumers now have a lower guilt level mm -hmm. in purchasing a fake. Does, does, have you found that? That's exactly right. There have actually been some studies that Gen Z in particular is more interested than ever in than any other generation in purchasing fakes. And by wow. some estimates, around 60 or 70 percent of young people of Gen Zers have bought consciously a counterfeit item and been happy about it. They intentionally go out and buy um, the $200 version rather than the, the $10,000 version because they see it as a sort of subversive, like, stick it to the man, like, I don't want to wow. give any more money to the bottom line of LVMH. I'd rather, you know, do something really subversive and, and cool. 
Um, so that kind of vibe is definitely pervasive amongst people. I think people realize that as there's widening wealth disparity across the globe, too, it's sort of difficult to, to be um, putting your money into something that you feel like you're not totally getting the value of. Yeah, people, I guess, are becoming a bit more conscientious about mm -hmm. um, what they're putting their money towards. But um, yeah, really fascinating to see. I definitely I think Elaine's got that taking wrong. both of them. <laughs> yeah. Amy, Thanks for the gift. Amy, Thanks, Amy. Corey, I'm not taking them. Amy, thank you so much. Amy. Thank you so much for having me.